Aaron Fisher, welcome back to the Plant Traders Podcast. Awesome. Thank you for having me. It's nice to be back. It's nice to see you with your beautiful background. For those people watching on YouTube, they can see our book. We're going to talk about it soon. But before we do, we wanted to know this time around what you are grateful for. Oh, wow. That's a really good question. Um, I'd have to say just really grateful for good friends and family. Um, I think that's been such a big theme over the last six to eight months. Yeah. I love when you take that extra second just to think before you respond because you're so deep in your thoughts quite often and uh, really appreciate that. Happy to have you back here. And we had you on the podcast in episode 284 where we talked a lot about goal setting and setting intentions for the new year. It came out January of two years ago already, I think. And so for anybody who's new to the show, hasn't listened to that episode, it was a very powerful one. And because the new year is coming up in a couple of weeks, it's a great one to go back and listen to. So we'll put the link in our show notes at planttrainers.com. Aaron, for anybody who doesn't know you, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us a bit about how you came into a plant-based lifestyle. Ooh, uh, what aspects of myself would you like me to share? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. Well, who, we, who is Aaron Fisher? We've Aaron gone. Fisher? We've gone through your. We've gone through yeah, we your did. bio. So you know the bio. The bio's out there. But in terms of your plant-based living and that transition that it took you through, just give us a recap from last time so that people who haven't listened there get an idea of what what encouraged you to become plant-based and how that changed your life. Yeah, speaking about that aspect of it, it's really interesting because I spent a majority of my life just eating absolutely everything. I didn't really care what I put in my body. None of that really mattered. I didn't really see myself doing much with my body anyway, so I just ate because I wanted to eat. You know, you're hungry, you just put things in your food, in, in your stomach. And my change started happening when I... I quit smoking about eight years ago and I was sitting with one of my mentors and uh, this is when I was going through a change in my life and he's like, uh, he, he looked at me and he's like, uh, you're one of the biggest liars I've ever met. And like here I'm like sitting next to this man and like, like I'm doing my talks, I'm working with Fortune 500 companies, I have my charity and he's like, I'm, I'm at like the, the pinnacle of like feeling great and he's calling me a big liar and a phony. And I'm like, why? He goes, because you smoke. He goes, you go to these countryside, you talk to the kids, and you smoke cigarettes. They see you, they smoke. You kill the kid. How do you feel? I'm like, wow, that's strong. Um, 30 days later, put away the cigarettes. And then a year later, I started at, like looking at different things that didn't hold any power with my life. And I'm like, drinking. Like, what does drinking really do? How does it really benefit? So I'm like, I'm going to go one year without drinking, which has now turned into about seven years. And through that, I started rock climbing. I started running. I started being more active. I started using my body more. And I didn't even realize it, but less and less time I had meat on my plate. My body just didn't crave it anymore. Like I would go out and I would order all this food and there would be like maybe one dish of meat. And then eventually just transitioned into me being completely plant-based. It was just, I like my body naturally gra gravitated towards that. And since then I've done my races, I've done my running, I've, I've like run, like done the company. Like I'm constantly like doing amazing things and I feel so amazing off of the foods that I eat. So. I didn't become plant-based for the animals. I didn't become plant-based for anything other than I changed my life and my lifestyle brought me to becoming more plant-based. And now it's uh, seven years, I think seven years plant-based. Yeah. It's a pretty inspiring story and it's pretty amazing that you ended up here and that's how we ended up getting in touch with each other through the lifestyle. And I'm so grateful for that because We've become training partners to a certain uh, extent and have been doing a lot socially of running together, training socially partners. distant <laughs> training partners, but we've been running together 
uh, virtually and sometimes side by side. Uh, and it's been amazing. And I've really enjoyed my time getting to know you. And I appreciate it. So I want to let you know that. I appreciate you, man, in so many different ways. And there's always social distancing kind of training because Adam's so fast and I always have to try and catch up with him. <laughs> so there's always that good six feet of distance between us at all times. You're, you're I, so I out of control know. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But you've always been somebody that has been very in tune with their body and very in tune with them, their selves, you know, emotions, foods that, that work for you, that don't work for you and, and having an understanding in a sense. And it's not surprising that it wasn't some big movie or or some person or a big health situation that actually got you to transition towards a plant-based lifestyle but that it was actually just intuition and spending the time to listen to your body because I do believe that everyone is intuitive that we've all got the ability to listen more to ourselves to listen more to the universe but whether we take the time to do it and um, you do take the time to do it you know you're fun but you're also very quiet and you listen and you think and then you speak so I, I always find that very interesting so I'm going to be excited about what it is that we talk about today and I know that you did I know very well that you did a self-supported Ironman over this COVID time and I know that there are many people out there who are extremely disappointed because they were all geared up to do their first Ironman their 10th Ironman their anniversary iron man there are no more cancer iron man and all of these iron men got canceled this season of course because of covid and people were left unable to compete but you didn't accept that so tell us more about <laughs> yeah, you... tell us yeah tell us more about the thought process that made you say well so you were yeah. you were set up to do an ironman race in august and the world shut down pretty much in march and you were then you realized that that race is not happening but you still had the motivation within yourself to say i'm going to do this anyway nobody's going to stop me I don't care. I'm just making it happen. And that's not a reaction that a lot of people have. So I want you to tell our listeners and us a little bit about that process of how you got yourself motivated enough to do that and about the whole experience because it was a pretty awesome experience. So the end of 2019, I finished running 35 races. Um, a couple of them I did with Adam which was a great one, the hills. We both came in first place. <laughs> Not that it's about that, but it was really nice to run a race with a really close friend and to just get that emotion and that feeling and being able to place it. At the end of the season, I did an ultra and um, I ended up hurting my ankle really bad. The mud, it was, it was supposed to be the easiest race of the year, but it was just raining and then these beautiful dirt roads turned into like these beautiful swamps so it was like 13 hours running in swamps and, um, and it injured my ankle. So I took some time off and I reflected on, okay, next year, what do I want to do? What do I want to create? What is something that I don't know how to do in my, in my discipline? And Ironman, like I'm a runner, I can do um, ultras and things like that. I can do obstacle courses, but... The only time I rode a bike was for like 16, 65 kilometers. And that was literally out of ego and pride. I didn't even want to ride that much. It was in China and I was riding my bike and there was this guy next to me who was my tour guide. And every 10 kilometers, he'd be like, oh, are you tired? And of course I was tired, but I'm like, no, are you tired? He's like, no. I'm like, okay, we'll go. And we ended up riding like 35 kilometers up this mountain and like we sat down and I'm like, he's like, are you tired? I'm like, no. It's like, you tired? He's like, yeah. I'm like, my butt's broken. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty tired. The good thing is the other 30 kilometers was all downhill and made it so worth it. But anyways, swimming was never a discipline. So I'm like, half Ironman didn't scare me. Full Ironman, I'm like, ooh, okay. I'm like, there's a thought. There's a feeling. I'm like, I want to do that. Also, just that feeling of being able to become like an Ironman, to like go into that kind of a distance has been something amazing. Something that Adam's achieved that I've, I've just been absolutely like, I just admire and I think such a 
beautiful thing. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. So I took a few months off, had to refocus on my body, refocus on my legs, refocus on like my training because my ankle was still in a very rough situation. Um, and then by February, I started to do a little more action. And then all of a sudden it's just like, Hey, all the races are, are, are done. Like there's no races for the year. And the crazy thing about that, I have to say is like, normally by January, I've already signed up for 20 races. I'm already gone for a couple months of the year and I'm training in different countries. I don't know why I just didn't, I didn't sign up for any other race other than the Ironman. And all of a sudden it's just like COVID happens and it's just like, no races are going on this year. So it comes down to that one thing that I've, I've always done. It's just like, you make a promise to yourself. The one thing I always do is I'll always keep the word. I'll always keep my word to myself. If I promise myself I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to figure out a way to do it. And I believe that the universe, society, friends, energy, whatever it is, will come together to help me to create and to do the things I want. It's not going to be easy, but I'm not looking for easy. I'm looking for growth. And that's what I got. So I did, I went for, um, I got a bike, a vintage bike off of um, Facebook for like 300 bucks. And I started riding and I went on like a little course and I, I used Strava for it. And then I noticed that there was somebody else on my Strava and he's always coming in first in the, in the area that I'm running in. So I send him a message. And I'm like, do you coach? He goes, yes, I coach. I'm like, okay, now I have an Ironman coach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I started training with him started putting in the the work and it's so it's so different when it's just like you're by yourself like where's the motivation to do this by yourself where's the motivation to want to get up where's the motivation to want to run like when you run in a race there's that energy of so many individuals but what am i really running for and that question would come up it's like why are you doing this like just be lazy you don't have to do this nobody cares and i'm like it's always those voices and we always have all these voices, but the voices don't matter. The voices are just residual noise that don't matter in our life. Our actions are what matters. And the more actions we take, the more voices we hear that actually help us to move towards the things that we want to in life. So kept on going every day. It's like, don't get on the bike. I'm like, awesome. So I went on the bike for an hour. You know, it's like, oh, it's, you know, don't go for a run. I'm like, awesome. Went for a run for three and a half hours. I'm like, anytime it's like, don't do it. I'm like, awesome. Let's just keep on doing these things or tell me not to do it. Because every time I do it, I feel better. I feel better. And moving towards the Ironman, it was great. I actually started reaching out to some people. I'm like, hey, do you want to go for runs with me? Hey, do you want to go for bike rides with me? And slowly started creating like a social distancing community of individuals. And because I was achieving, because I was working up to such a big goal, I was finding people. I'm like, what's your goal? It's like, oh, I want to run a 5K. I'm like, great, let's train for your 5K. So they would train for their 5K as I was training for my Ironman. And we would, they would meet me on my slower days. And they would compete their 5K. And I would run with them and support them. So one of the biggest things in motivation was just because you have a goal that's so big does not mean that you cannot support people that have goals that are so small. And their small goal was once your big goal. And your big goal is not bigger than their small goal. So just because I'm using the word big and small does not mean my Ironman succeeds or is better than anybody running a 5K. A 5K is just as hard as running an Ironman if you've never ran a day in your life. So instead of just making it about me, I made it about how can I bring more people into this and support them as I move towards my dream, as I move towards my Ironman. So closer to the event, I met somebody who had a nutrition. Normally I, I do races with no nutrition, but I was recommended to actually take an intake. So I decided to take an intake. I found this company that does um, just 
it's like natural stuff, all plant-based. Um, they're called You Can. They were absolutely great. I was actually, I took my bike to a bike shop and I was speaking to the people in the bike shop and this one guy goes, hey, have you ever tried You Can? I'm like, I don't know what that is. He goes, it's plant-based. It's great. It's great for your body. Try it out. Sure. Send the company an email. The guy sends me an email back. Customer service was so great, we actually became friends. And I told him about the journey, and he's like, hey, why don't I sponsor you? Okay, let's do it. And we ended up thinking about, okay, so the Iron Man is I am Iron Man. Why not take this event and make it I am? I am. So instead of it being about me, well, why don't we bring mothers in, fathers in? Why don't we bring anybody who wants to do anything on this day to come in? And if they come in, we'll give them medals. We'll give them swag. We'll support them. Because during COVID, the word I am is so powerful. I am lazy. I am stupid. I am smart. I am strong. Whatever it is you choose to use after I am is what you identify with. So on this day, it was like, how can we inspire people? I am. And um, the journey kept on going on. Um, I supported my friend while he did his first half Ironman, which was absolutely incredible. We picked the best day because it was the hottest day of the year to go run it. And he almost passed out a few times, but he made it to the end. And then, you know, brought in other people to come and support the uh, I am event. We rented a cottage and then ran it. And the one thing was, my one thing about the Iron Man was, the one thing I said to myself is, Aaron, you don't have to do it. You get to do this. This is not about time. This is not about getting to the finish line. It's about smiling. It's about being grateful. It's about enjoying the moment. It's about really connecting with yourself. And it's about making this day as beautiful as you possibly can. Enjoy the process, the, the goal will find itself. I will cross the line, but I got to smile. So the day of the Ironman was uh, Lake of Bays. Got up and you know we rented a cottage. I had friends there and it was just like, you know the mind, like my mind's like, I can't believe like all these people are here to support me beyond gratitude, beyond grateful. It's like, you know, the, the idea is like, like, I'm surrounded by such amazing people. I, like I must be doing something well in my life if all these amazing people are here. And uh, they cheer us on, well, they cheer me on and I put on my wetsuit and I get into the water. Water's nice and clean and just calm. And I swim to the island and I start swimming back. And the guy in the kayak, my friend, um, he was yelling at me, but I, I can't hear him because I have my earplugs on and he's yelling at me and I'm still swimming and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And like, he's pointing with his paddles in directions and like, cause I bring up my head and I'm like, what's going on? So apparently we got lost, um, on the swim. Yeah. So we, we, um, we picked how far to go. But the thing is when you swim from a cottage that you've never been to, it's nice to see where you go out, but swimming back, all the cottages look the same. So instead of like swimming the normal Ironman distance, I actually swam an extra 400 meters till eventually we found it and uh, take off, take off the wetsuit. My friend's cheering me on and he's like singing songs, you know, like Rocky, I have the tiger, you know, get into the car, I get onto my bike and I just start going. And the one thing about the Ironman courses, so I, designed the Ironman course and the day I designed the Ironman course like I, I went up to the Lake of Bays a week before and I was noticing like all these people doing the course that I was designing backwards and I'm like why are these people punishing themselves like why don't they just go the, the easier way well the day that I went to ride the bike I realized that they were going the easier way and I picked the hardest way possible to ride that bike it was uphill and uphill and elevations and nonstop. It went up and then it went up 
and then it went flat, and then it went up. And the whole time I'm just laughing. I'm like, way to go, way to go. Um, the heat starts to hit in, and you know the one thing about running and doing endurance for so long is you really connect with things and spirits and nature and there's a point where I'm riding the bike and you know it's it's getting heavy on my legs and I just start singing um, a song so one of my best friends who passed away we would sing Chinese songs together because of the years we lived in China and he was just there next to me and like I could hear him being like why are you doing this and just laughing, not like, oh, why are you doing this? Like, why are you doing this? And just being like, you're crazy. And then singing songs and me and him having like these most amazing conversations and just feeling so connected to him and then moving on. And then the loop. Change, people cheering on, then the loop. Finish off the bike. And then I had friends waiting for me to do the run. And uh, they all wanted to run together. So we all started running together. And then they looked around and I wasn't there and they're, you know, everybody's like, where's Aaron? I was in a bush, um, pissing and <laughs> <laughs> it just needed to happen. I'm sorry. Like you're riding, you're drinking a lot of liquids. You just need to go. You're supposed to leave that on the bike. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no streams for anybody. Um, and yeah, just, just running and just smiling and just laughing and just enjoying myself the whole time. Like, stopping going for a walk and the thing is people at cottages they're just waving at me and i'd stop and i'm like hey how you doing they're like what are you doing i'm like just going for a nice run they're like oh, that's a great day i'm like that's a great day too and i continue to go on and that energy of like people around and just smiling and laughing and just making the moment the moment was the most important thing and when i got to the end of it about 13 hours after and um i finished i was I was still full of energy. People are cheering me on in the end and like seeing my friends come out running, achieving goals that they normally wouldn't. People giving everybody like I am medals and like making it into such an amazing event with me and a whole bunch of people that came together for it was absolutely incredible. So that's a little bit of the, um, the Iron Man story. I always love that whatever you do, there's always an adventure associated with it. No matter what it is, there's an adventure and you always tend to find the positive side of things. So no matter how down you get or how hard things might be, there's always a positive side and a positive spin and perspective that you put on it. So you took the I am that so many people right now would finish that sentence with, I am alone or I am lonely. I am having a real hard time with COVID. And you built this community around an event that you were running on your own. And I think it's something that so many people benefited from and are probably still benefit, benefiting from now. And I know that you inspire me to keep going and keep training and keep pushing myself to see which limits I could exceed because we all have our own limits that we can all go far behind. And I know you keep pushing me harder and harder to do that. So Thank you for that as well. What did you want to say? I just wanted to say that, that I mean, that's a great story. And when you make, I, I just keep going back to when I make myself a promise, I'm going to keep it. And you created opportunity for other people to make promises to themselves and keep it too. And I think that's, you know, that's part of what we try to instill here at Plant Trainers where as we were on our journey, I mean, we were 100% plant-based when we started this podcast, but we wanted to learn more. We wanted to spread more. We wanted to learn more ourselves and make sure that we stay committed to ourselves and to our family. And by creating a podcast where we're showing up every day and people are like, okay, what's next? What's new? Um, we've pulled so many other people into it as well as we have the commitment to ourselves. We can just go out and take all these courses with all of these amazing guests that we have on the show. But when we put in the effort to bring them here and to share it with everybody else, we're enriching other people's lives too. And we feed off that energy. It, it, it helps us grow. It's, it's our purpose for being here. Mm -hmm. And we see that, we see that with what you've done here too. Yeah. I appreciate it. 
And it's, yeah, it's really beautiful to see the things that you guys do and how you inspire other people, how you're constantly helping other individuals, how you're on your own mission. And you're just holdy hold, you're always holding this um, beautiful space of growth for everybody. You know, it's not judging them of, you aren't like this. It's like supporting them and being like, well, what is it that you're looking for? And no matter what state they are in their life, whether they're fully plant-based or not, you're always able to help people on their mission. You're always able to support people on their mission. And I find that to be something extremely um, valuable because nobody wants judgment. Nobody wants to be judged. They want, they want support because we're so busy judging ourselves sometimes that to actually meet other people and be like, Oh, you really do care about me. Oh, you, you, you're not going to judge me because I've done this, this, and this. Oh, you really want to help me. Oh, you're, you're actually listening to me. Thanks. And I, I, I have to say that that's what I really admire and respect about you both. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. But this show's about you. So, so. <laughs> I, I wanted to, I mean, it, it's very timely, but I wanted to show everybody who's watching on YouTube, this book that you have that just came out or is just coming out or a bit of both uh love letters you could show oh you've got uh. one as well look at that it's <laughs> popping up everywhere right now but it, it's a really i think timely i mentioned i am alone i am lonely there's a lot of people feeling that way during this pandemic during covid and your book that came out is called love letters and i want you to explain to us a little bit about why this book right now? And I know on the back it says I needed this in this very moment. And that's very interesting because of what I just said. And as I lifted it up, I see it on the back. So I just read it. But that's pretty cool. Uh, I want you to maybe tell us how this book came about and why now it's so important for people to take a look at it. So the story about the book was I've actually written three books. First book was to prove to myself that I can write a book. And that I keep only for me and on my shelf to show myself that all these self-doubts that I have and beliefs that I have are just beliefs, but they're not mine. They were given to me, but it doesn't mean that I have to receive them. And having it on my shelf allows me to remember that these were just somebody's opinion at some time, but it's not my truth. The second book that I did was more of like a memoirs that I just wrote from my time coming back from China once again, something for me. And this book, I actually had all my passages that I had from Instagram, which has been over uh, seven or eight years, and I didn't know what to do with them. So I gave it to my partner and she, she spent all this time and she broke them down and she compiled them into like a hundred and then I took it from there and I broke it down into the ones that I liked. and. She's like, you know what? There's a theme to all these posts, uh, all these, all these, um, yeah, passages. And I'm like, she's like, they're like love letters. And I'm like, wow, that makes sense. And if it wasn't for her, uh, this book, Love Letters, wouldn't have come together. But the writing inside of it was, remember when you were younger, maybe you had a journal, maybe you had a diary and you would write in it and you're like, there's always that like there was like that moment of like oh no what happens if somebody reads this um, what do people think about me if they really understand like who I really am it's just like and then you censor it in case a hypothetical person reads it so you're not really fully sharing who you truly are with yourself which causes more um, rifts and just ways to not really connect with yourself well this book is me sharing myself it's 100 percent me like no filter because i believe that when you share your truth you give somebody permission to share their truth but my book was not written for other people it was written for me to give my truth to myself and through that process it's allowed a lot of individuals to do the same so when i write a passage when i write anything in the book it's not like what is everybody going to like? It's like, no, what do I need right now? Do I need a poem? Do I need a, a motivational passage? Do I need to talk about suicidal thoughts? Do I need to talk about eating disorders? Do I need to talk about the battle that rages in my mind sometimes? What do I need right now? How can I take what's in here and just put it on a piece of paper to look at it, to take that breath? And that's what the book has, and that's what it became. 
And it's been absolutely incredible, the feedback that's been received from this book as well. And um, yeah, you're right. Right now is a very timely time. Because right now there are so many things that we're going through. Mental health, a lot of it is going up. A lot of depression, a lot of anxiety. It's on a rise because we're not really connecting so much as humans. So what do we need? Well, we need a little bit more love. And how do we get love? Well, one letter at a time. Well, what does that look like? That's your choice. And this was mine. And this is how love letters came, came to be the way it is. When you first look at it, you almost think that it's going to be to your love, right? To your other person, to your partner, to your, you know, you, you don't really know what to expect. And when it arrived, our daughter opened it and she started reading them. And it was like, it was almost like she needs to get through two or three until my brain registered to say, oh, no, 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 these are not letters to somebody else. These are letters to me. These are to keep me motivated, to keep me on par, to keep me knowing that I love myself. Um, and 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 it was very it was very clear. But, you know, when you expect something, it's almost like your brain makes it happen. And And then my brain had this big like moment of no, 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 Shoshana, pay closer attention. Um, but it was it was it was really interesting. And it was exactly what what people need. And we do see such a big rise in mental health issues now, you know, much bigger rise in, in suicide. And if everybody had a book to support them, how much easier their days might be and for people to create their own love letters to themselves and, and be inspired to do that. Is, is that something that was on your radar too, hoping that people would be um, motivated to write their own? 100%. The, to start with the love letters is step one. I am going to be holding like love letter workshops where people can write love letters. I believe that we need to express ourselves and writing is such a great form of it that speak to that emotion, speak to that feeling. And a lot of times the, these thoughts are like, going around our mind like nonstop. It's just like, well, when you write it down, it's almost like you puke them on a piece of paper and they have nowhere to go, like you can see them. And once you see them, you can actually become more in control of them. You can let them flow, you can let them become, you can play with them, you can be creative. You have more of a, a connection of how they will become in your, in your life. So it's like, well, I feel worthless, okay, so, Let's write down worthlessness. Okay, dear worthlessness, um, you know, and let's just write down all these thoughts and these feelings that you have within. And then it's all of a sudden you like this like cathartic feeling happens that you're like, oh, so I'm not worthlessness. It was just a thought. Oh, okay, if I'm not that, then maybe I'm not a lot of these other things I have. Well, let's write these things down, right? And I don't think that writing is the only way to get this out, but I believe writing can be super powerful. Pen to paper. You know, that's why they say the pen is mightier than the sword, because the sword only cuts the skin, while the words and the thoughts and emotion can haunt the soul. This is why getting it out can really help to take a lot of the inner world and put it on the outside. And then once on the outside, you realize that, shit, that's not even, it's not even so bad. It's not even me. It's not even, I have a choice in this option. Like, I have a choice in these situations. You have so many different passages and poems and some are short, some are long. Is there one that's your favorite in here? So I've been on a few talks already and I've been asked this question and no, I love like I, it's not like I'm saying I love them all because I wrote the book, but I'm saying I love them all because I wrote the book. <laughs> right. <laughs> because these, these are all timely in certain points in my life. So every time I read, I, it's like when I read a passage, it brings me back to that moment, to that time. And in that time, was it, it was one of my favorite moments because it really did help me. Um, it really did. Yeah, so I have a, a very big connection with all the passages and things in the book. They're, they're really great. A lot of them just hit home. And you could, you could open it up on any day to a different page and read something that will just – spark i mean i just opened this right now while we're talking and it says i love you not for who you were or for who you think you will be but for what you are now here 
in this moment with me. And it's just, just thank you for being here with us and for putting this out there because there's so many messages in this book that are going to really help so many people get through these tough times. And I, I mean, yeah. Did you want to say something? No. no. <laughs> you like that, eh? I like so that. I'm if, pretending you wrote that for me. Yeah, I wrote that for you. I wrote that for myself. <laughs> I wrote that for you. Aaron Fisher wrote that for everybody and everybody can pick up their own copy. Uh, I'll put a link in our show notes to the book so people can pick it up. Uh, Aaron, if anybody wants to reach out and connect with you, where would be the best place for them to go? So the best place to go would be Instagram, where it's uh, The Awakening Self, which is always great. And on The Awakening Self, there's in my profile, you can find my podcast, you can find my YouTube channel, you can find previous talks, but you can also um, find ways to send me your email, to send me a message, to book like a 30-minute chat if you want to have a, just a conversation about things. So in there, you can have access to pretty much all the ways to contact me. Perfect. So we'll link to that in the show notes at planttrainers.com. As always, it is our pleasure to speak to you. We love hanging out with you. Thank you for everything you've done for us personally and for all the people you come into contact with and for sharing the love letters that you are sharing. And I can't wait to get back out on the road with you and start running again, which hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, it's already happening. (laughs) right thank you again so much for your time for everything that you do for all of your friends for all the people who are not your friends yet that (laughs) you don't even know of yet and we really do appreciate you being here today on the plant trainers podcast beautiful thank you guys so much for having me here i really appreciate you guys thank you thank you